To celebrate Mother's Day, I'm doing a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Y using only mother-themed Pokemon. Like many others, I'm sure, if you forgot to give your mom something, send her this video. I'm sure she'll love it. In Nuzlocke's, Permadeath is on for our Pokey Companions. This will really raise the stakes, as the Kalos region is home to only a small handful of mother-likes. Getting to Diantha will be tough, but I know many moms have done way more with way less. This game makes our first encounter very simple by handing us Mom the Fennekin right away. She will be the main mom of our team and the only encounter before the first gym. She does a pretty good job at that too, setting ablaze anything standing in our way. Thanks, Mom! Being a bug-type gym, you'd probably think Viola would be a walk in the park. But you're wrong! She has a Surskit who threatens not only weakening our embers with water sport, but also the super effective bubble. Predictably, they set up water sport, so Mom goes for a howl to boost our scratches. Surskit only really uses quick attack, which means Mom can start using Scratch and burn through Viola's potions. Water Sport shortly expires, so I greedily go for Ember. But they just set up another one before we land a hit. This lets them survive and finally hit us with Bubble. Mom barely holds on and then gets her speed dropped. Surskit finally goes down, but the villain is no joke. Our only way out of this is for Mom to get a crit with Ember and then burn. But before we even get a chance, a critical hit tackle ends our entire first run. Um, yeah. These might be the hardest Pokemon games. Attempt 2 starts off a little better. Apparently, Mom number 1 had an adamant nature. And now, Mom number 2 is sassy, which is a little more preferable. In the next attempt against Viola, I waste no time and set up three howls. Sosuke lands a bubble and a critical quick attack, but Mom and I get past the first hurdle with a little more health than last time, but it's still not looking good. Water Sport may have ended, but Viola still has her potions. Unless a miracle happens, it's back to the drawing. Let's go! So this is the power of a single mom. The next route gives us access to the next three parental figures. Matriarch, Mother, and Mommy. For the moment, they aren't that strong, but one day they will become invaluable teammates for the run. It's a long, long road before the next gym, so in the meantime, I'll be exploring the big city. It's time to go shopping! Oh. Well, making a trainer PR video is free! Serving and slaying just comes so natural to me anyways. Uh, oh, I thought this would be a little easier. On the bright side, I could sell some items and barely afford a haircut. I'm thinking something shorter, please. Thank you. Hey, Calum, you like my new haircut? Okay, that does it. I hate the French. In the coffee shop, I meet Lysander, the man obsessed with Diantha's mothering, and Diantha, the mother herself. Yas queen, age like wine, or whatever you guys are talking about. On the way to the next couple of encounters, Mom evolves, and I run into a psychic trainer. I wanted to test out the matriarch's abilities, but instead, I'm reminded that the random NPCs do not mess around. There are plenty of optional battles that clear the gym leader's difficulty in this game, in my opinion. The level 13 Kadabra is a pretty scary example since Mom doesn't resist psychic types just yet, but our level advantage narrowly gets us out of there. Now, my next two Pokemon are only one bridge away. But this deadbeat Snorlax doesn't want me to see him. In order to progress, I head to Parfum Palace to trap a dog and watch some fireworks. Whoa. Ooh, let me turn the 3D on here. Ah! There's a mirror here? Now, the Snorlax is more of a threat than I thought. Only level 15, but the stats way outperform my many moms right now. Mother almost dies to one hit. While the Snorlax sets up a defense curl, Matriarch tags in to snag her citrus berry with Bug Bite. Unfortunately, she can't take any more hits, so we're back to Mom on a lick. There's very little that we can do here, and honestly, I'm already preparing for another wipe. My only way out is to burn the Snorlax with an Ember. It's a long shot, but I have to play to my win condition. Turns out the shot wasn't that long, because Mom gets the burn on the second Ember. If the Snorlax attacked instead of setting up defense curls and amnesias, then this would have been way worse. But I guess my imposing aura saved the day this time around. Finally, we could get a full team of six. Welcome Mother the Spritzy and Madre the Roselia to the team. Spritzy might sound like a weird choice, but I guess I haven't explained what a mom Pokemon is. Vespiquin probably fits that bill a little more directly, but otherwise, the Pokemon I choose for this run basically have big mother vibes when they're fully evolved. And mothers come in all shapes and sizes. It isn't long before Ma, the Mianfu, joined the team as well. Sadly, she won't be evolving until level 50, so I'm going to be keeping her very safe until then. Finally, I encounter the most mom Pokemon of all, Kangaskhan. I nickname her Mama, and her influence reaches Mother, Matriarch, and Mother, 
because they evolve immediately after. I also don't have to worry about being broke anymore thanks to my access to Rock Smash. There are pearls of all kinds everywhere, and that means it's time to go shopping. I cannot believe how much better the wardrobe is for the girl characters. I've heard stories, but man. Now we can finally challenge the second gym. I am going to be using the anime rules for all gym and elite four fights in this game, meaning I can only bring the same number of Pokemon to the fight as the gym leader. When recording the first bunch of these though, I didn't have the time to run back after making it through the trainers, so please accept this crude cover up. The first match is Mama versus Amora. And pretty predictably, they just go down to a couple rock smashes. When Tyrant comes in, they're subject to a defense drop and a second rock smash just puts them in the red. However, I'm unsure if their rock tomb lets them outspeed Mama now, and I don't want to risk a crit. Mother comes in to save the day and eat a critical hit bite. From there, he gets a clean kill with Draining Kiss, winning us the second badge. There's not a whole lot of rest time because I get an early match against Karina and her two Lucarios. This could be a pretty scary fight a lot of the time, but Matriarch actually walls these guys. Their only attacking moves are Power Up Punch and Faint. Our last encounter until late game is here. Everybody meet Mamacita the Nidoran. Ooh, Mamacita, you can't keep the boys away, huh? So before we fight Karina for real, we have to get through Reflection Cave. This place has a lot of optional trainer battles that can be deadly, like I mentioned earlier. It also has Wild Wobbuffet, and those guys could very easily take a team member down with them. Luckily for me, I played 5 hours of Assassin's Creed 3 on the Xbox 360 when I was a kid. So a couple of repels and some immaculate maneuverability later, I make it to Sholor City. Once I enter, everyone starts yelling at me to learn about Mega Evolution, and then Kalen wants to fight me for the Mega Ring. Does anyone know that 90% of the Mega Evolutions are post-game anyways? He sends out Meowsic and I send out Mommy. I have no idea why I did that, so then I send in Matriarch on a fake out. Two bug bites later, and the Meowstic goes down. Absol comes out, and even though Matriarch is the most physically bulky Pokemon I'm gonna encounter in this run, I don't wanna deal with any super luck bite flinch combos. Mother comes in, and it turns out my fears were valid. Once Mother is on the field, he gets crit flinched. Twice. Luckily for us, that's all the super luck they get, and a couple of draining kisses get the Absol out of my sight. Frogadier is last, but he only knows Quick Attack and Water Pulse, so Madre is completely safe to come in and get the kill. Corinna's finally ready to fight, and Mommy has now fully evolved. You'd think I show her off in the gym fight, but you're wrong! Mother is on a rampage, and in all likelihood, he won't be used much after Mommy and Mother start shining. And if Mother doesn't disappoint! The level cap of 32 is high enough for him to learn Moonblast. And then he just one-shots every single Pokemon in the gym. On the way to gym number 4, I evolve Mamacita. I also find the one naturally occurring shiny stone. I thought Mother and Madre needed different stones to evolve, but it turns out I'm gonna have to choose between the two. After some contemplation, I realized since Madre is my only grass type, she'll be getting the stone. Mother will be saved for later. Caleb challenges me to a battle again, but his team is the exact same. I'm not kidding. Ramos and his iconic scissors are ready for my challenge, but so am I, and I don't even need my poison types. Mama lands a fake out strength strength combo and takes out jump Jumpluff. Gogoda is next, so naturally, Matriarch comes in on an immune bulldoze. Takedown is their best move for the queen, so it's only a matter of time before they go down as well. Weepin' Bell is... Unidentified objects were confirmed to have entered Earth's atmosphere. Two shot by the OG mom with Psybeam. For some reason now, the duty falls upon me to fix the power plant and restore power to France. It's not all bad because mom fully evolves as a result. But the gauntlet of Team Flare's very similar Pokemon and a boss fight against one mighty Anna is pretty underwhelming. Okay, yeah, I'll admit it. AZ jump scared me on my way to gym 5. I forgot he existed. Now that the city has opened up and I'm rich, I head over to the Lumio City Boutique and change my apparel. But apparently I'm not fashionable enough. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Well, since I'm in the area, I might as well get another haircut. Mmm, surprise me. Oh, do you know there's a grooming salon specifically for Furfro? What exactly do you mean by that? Are you saying I look like a dog? 
Oh, great. And now I'm blonde. <laughs> well, maybe now the boutique will let me in. <laughs> Bro. I impulse bought the trench coat and immediately regretted it. But $300,000 later, and forgetting to get my Pokemon to the level cap, I begin my fight against Clement. Surprisingly, he's no pushover. His Amolga puts up a pretty good fight, and it doesn't help that Mommy's best attack is Confusion. Magneton is no slouch either. When I switch Mom in, they immediately get an accuracy drop. It works out for them because one turn later, Mom misses a Mystical Fire and they land a strong Thunderbolt. We land the hit the following turn, but they hang on with Sturdy and land another Thunderbolt. I know they're most likely to heal, but I don't want any shenanigans. So on the heal, I send in Mamacita for her very first battle. Mirror Shot is their only move that can hit us, so a few double kicks later, and they go down. Clement sends out Heliolisk, and with the damage Mamacita took, it's looking a little scary. But looks could be deceiving, and Mamacita wins us our fifth badge. Nice! Oh, hey guys! Did you notice my new hair? Kalem once again challenges us to a battle, but the team is still mostly the same. The biggest difference is his starter being fully evolved. Oh no, another Pokemon weak to bug types. What will I do? I change my outfit again, because I can, and head on over to Valerie for the sixth badge. Honestly, for being the gym to showcase a brand new fairy type, the fight isn't anything special. Mom immediately deletes the Mawile, and then lowers Sylveon's special attack a couple times, making way for Mama to switch in. From there, a fake out and strength do the trick. Mr. Mime is last, and... goes down to a single strength. Team Flare took over the Pokeball factory, and just know that it was pretty much the exact same experience as the power plant. I hate France. No comment? The Frost Cavern is now available to us, and that means the penultimate encounter is as well. Mamid the Jinx, welcome to the team. Now, I've got to clear out the cave from here, as Team Flare is looking at an Obama Snow wrong or something. It's no biggie, but on the way there, I run into one of the scary optional trainers. Battle girl Kinsey sends out Sock, who is obviously a pretty bad matchup for Mama. I switch in Mother on the low sweep, then right after I lock in Moonblast, Sock lands a terrifying poison jab. That poisons. Mother's citrus berry saves him this time, and Moonblast activates their sturdy. Mamacita eats the following poison jab pretty easily, as well as the second one before taking out the Sock with Earth Power. Mianxiao is next, and the Retaliate almost claims the first kill. Earth Power only does half, so it's mommy time. The next Retaliate isn't as strong since it's not following a kill, and after dodging a Rock Slide flinch, Dazzling Gleam gets the win. <sighs> it's, it's weird, right? They obviously knew how to make challenging trainers. Like, what happened to the gyms? And Team Flare! Well, after another battle against Kalem that's still mostly the same, he has Flareon now. I challenge the seventh gym leader. And check it out! I got around to updating my team and overlay and everything, finally. Pro tip time, everyone. Feeling unmotivated? Just drink water. The battle starts off simply enough. Mami has an impressive first showing and one shots the Sigilyph with Frost Breath. Slow King then threatens Mami with Power Gem, so I send in Mama. On a yawn. Well, I don't want to deal with the sleep, so I switch back into Mami on another yawn. This goes on for like a dozen times until Slowking finally uses Power Gem. Now, Mama can almost take the kill with Fake Out and Crunch. The Slowking goes for yawn once again, so even though they're in kill range, I switch again. I know they're gonna heal, so we'll just be asleep if we stay in. Sometime later, Mama can come back in and do the same combo. This time, a Calm Mind boosted Psychic almost takes her out, but now we can just outspeed and take the kill. Last is Meowstic. Man, thanks to all the rival fights, we know Matriarch is pretty perfect for the job. They get two Calm Minds off before we land in attack order. It doesn't quite get the kill, so the plus two Psychic stops my heart for a second. Luckily, Matriarch is pretty bulky, so another attack order earns us our seventh badge. To celebrate, I bought more clothes. By the way, for the record, this is not some joke about women loving to shop or anything. The customization is just really fun in this game. And now that I'm mothering along with my Pokemon, Lysander starts to see me as a threat. Or he's testing me? I don't know, but the only Pokemon to worry about for now is Gyarados. He's got Iron Head, Aqua Tail, Earthquake, and Outrage. For most of my Pokemon, that means death due to 
type weakness or just not being physically bulky. Matriarch, again, is an okay switch, being my most physically bulky Pokemon, and resistant to Iron Head. The crit does shake me to my core a little bit though. The next turn we barely live in Aqua Tail, and Matriarch lands a critical power gem. But it doesn't even do half. Okay, time to fumble everybody. I send in Madre to take the next hit, then Mama enters on an Outrage. She takes it pretty well and thankfully Mama outspeeds. So another fake out strength combo does the trick. Now that my team is hurting, the Pyroar is pretty threatening. Mamacita switches in on a resisted Fire Blast, then dodges the next one before landing a surprisingly weak dig. It's around this point I realize Mamacita has the ability Rivalry which raises attack power against the same gender, but weakens it against different ones. She's our only ground type, so I'm just gonna operate the same way as before. Murkrow is last and trades a pretty scary foul play for a Thunderbolt. He outspeeds, so Mother comes in to tank a scary Steel Wing. And then Moonblast does the trick. Well, that was simple enough, but things are gonna be ramping up now in this game. And Lysander is only gonna be getting stronger. Boo! One visual novel and one visual terrorism later, it's time for round two against Lysander. And he's got some threats. Luckily for us, the new level cap means I could finally evolve Ma. He's got the highest speed and highest attack stat of any other mother in the game. So he'll be pretty crucial for the few battles we bring him. But for the most part, my team is slow. Especially my answers for the Pokemon Lysander's bringing. Trying to come up with a way to get out of this fight deathless, I realize that my best bet is Mother. He honestly just might be the MVP of the whole run. And I'm not kidding. In round two, I lead with Mother, actually. He's a great matchup for Mian Chao. While they waste time setting up swords dances, Mother uses Trick Room to reverse the speed of the fight. As a result, Mother can now outspeed and one shot the Mian Chao with Moonblast, two shot the Gyarados with Thunderbolt, and then one shot the Honchkrow with another Moonblast. Wow, I was not planning for a performance like that. Let's go! But the Trick Room has ended and Pyroar is back. This time, Mamacita doesn't dodge the second Fire Blast, and Dig is not enough to kill. So now someone has to switch in. Mami is a great contender for this, and tanks the unresisted Fire Blasts before deleting the Pyroar. Did you guys like that? Pretty cool fight, right? <laughs> well, that's good, because have you ever heard of the uh, rule of threes? This time, Lysander's extra mad. I woke up his bird, and in extent ruined his whole life. As you can probably guess, I'm sticking to the same exact plan as before. Mother's Trick Room lets him outspeed and one-shot the Mian Chao and Honchkrow. I'm not gonna lie, I was hoping Gyarados would come in again and plan on having Mother just do as much damage as he could before going down. But Pyroar is here first. Well, we're still at full health. Nothing wrong with a little T-Bolt damage. One more couldn't hurt. Okay, okay, Trick Room ended and Mother put on quite the performance. I can't bear to see him go at this point, so I make the call to switch in Mamacita. The first Fire Blast misses, which is incredible, because now their Fire Blasts are doing 50% to our cat, bear, rabbit thing. But with the damage from Mother, Dig is now more than enough to get the kill. Oh cool, our berry activated. Lastly of course is Lysander's Mega Gyarados. My headcanon is that Lysander needs the crazy gear to pull this off. Now, I have no idea if this is true, but I don't want to know. It feels like a superpower not being bothered by this. Being a Mega makes this guy as scary as ever though, and since I'm hoping for an Earthquake, Matriarch switches in. Sadly, they do go for Aqua Tail instead. This does some crazy damage to our most physically bulky Pokemon of the run. And suddenly, there's no deathless path out of the fight. And even if I do sacrifice someone else right now, no one can switch in and simply out-damage a Mega Gyarados. Matriarch, without a doubt, gets outsped. Preparing for the worst, our Queen Bee stays in on their Aqua Tail. But it ends up missing! We send an attack order upon the Mega Gyarados that's super effective. It does an easy 50%, but the next Aqua Tail does, in fact, land. Matriarch put up an incredible show this run, and her sacrifice here will make sure no one else has to go down. Ma comes in for the save, and now easily cleans up with a Drain Punch. Taking out Lysander once and for all. Hey, wait, can't this machine, like, revive dead Pokemon or something? Oh, oh cool, there's, there's a little juice left? Wait, um, how will I know where it lands? Uh, wait, wait, oh, no! One mom down, and the moms and I are sad. 
But there's no time to mourn. It's time for some battles against everyone's favorite rivals. This particular sequence is a little rough because it's three back-to-back -back battles. They'll heal me after the second fight, but it's still pretty much a 6v9. Mamacita will be front-running this gauntlet, and does a good job in one-shotting the Delcaddy. Gudra comes in right away and is the scariest Pokemon to deal with. Sludge Wave and Earthquake is great coverage for my team, but Mama does surprisingly well into the matchup. Chestnut is last in this first fight, but of course, Mom takes her out. Mamacita is ready to go for the next fight, but I got a little overzealous and go for a Poison Jab instead of Surf. I wanted to land Poison, but instead get burned by Flame Body. Oops. Mother tags in and the acrobatics are getting pretty scary, but he lives long enough to get the kill. Roserade only has Petal Dance, so this is another free matchup for Mom. Crowdonk caps off this section and crits Madre on her switch. Luckily we outspeed and get the one shot with Giga Drain. Now my Pokemon have been healed and this last fight is going to be the easiest. Mamacita leads once again and uses Dig. And it one shots the Raichu. Florges comes out. I'm sorry mother. And also gets one shot. Finally the Aerodactyl enters the fight and poses some threat but it's nothing to Mamacita. We're nearing the end game here and can finally get our last encounter. Welcome Matron the Gathatita. <laughs> Gathita to the team. For now, she'll be a stay at home mom unless tragedy hits. The last gym fight surprisingly gets a little stressful. You'd think it'd be super easy, but you're wrong. Mom, of course, one shots both the Abomasnow and the Avalog. The Cryogonal should go down just as easily, but pulls off some hacks. When Flamethrower puts him in a red, they land a Confuse Ray. Next turn, they heal and Mom just hurts himself in confusion. The following turn, it happens again, and then they freeze us with Ice Beam. If you thought that a Flamethrower would be enough to thaw out the Fire type, you'd be wrong because for three turns, he remains frozen. Cryogonal has Flash Cannon, so Mommy can't switch in at all. Mama will have to save the day once again. The Ice Beams do some crazy damage, but our new combo of Fake Out and Max Friendship Return clutches up. You guys know these are the, uh, the easiest Pokemon games, right? Speaking of, Victory Road is only one city block away, and the first required trainer and their one Weavile proves some threat. Mommy ends up taking it down, but it was a reminder to stay locked in. I've gotten really good at dodging optional trainers now, so the next fight is the very last rival fight. It's a 5v5 since I needed a slot open for HMs. Yo, shout out to Poliwhirl. I got another haircut. Kalem leads the fight with Meowstic as always, and we may not have our Bumblebee anymore, but Mom just out Shadow Balls the blue feline. Greninja doesn't fare much better, as Mommy's special attack lets her live long enough to one shot with Moonblast. Flareon goes down to a few earthquakes, Altaria gets one shot by Mommy, and then Absol, who I was sure mega evolved by now, is eliminated by Mama. Bye, Kalum, I already forgot about you. There are a couple more required trainers here in Victory Road, but the team manages to get by. Shout out to Mommy dodging the Stone Edge on a switch, then living the next one to take out Gigalith. That could have easily been really tragic. But that's pretty much it for the journey. The time has finally come to take on the Pokemon League. This time around, joining me will be Mom, Mommy, Madre, Mama, Mamacita, and Mami. Just a reminder, I'll be using the anime rules when challenging the Elite Four. I can't box Pokemon in between fights, so just trust the overlay for now. Also, this Elite Four is known for being the easiest, as they each only have four Pokemon, and some of them have pretty low BSTs. But there are still some matchups here that'll counter my mother's really well. The Dragon Dancing Gyarados, the Perfect Coverage Aegislash, and half of Diantha's team come to mind. Well, either way, let's see if the Sister Wives and I have got good... <sighs> Let's see if the team of moms and I have got the goods to make it to Diantha, the honorary mother of the Kalos region. Dubbed by me. The first of the Elite Four that I fight is Malva. And, ooh, this looks sick. Let me turn on my 3D. Ow! The battle begins and Mamacita finally has a good rivalry matchup against the female Pyroar. 
The attack boost doesn't last for long though, because they lead with a Noble Roar, lowering both our physical and special attack stats. Now we can't one-shot them, but get the kill after going down to almost half. I would have rather they just attacked first, because now, even though we have a super effective Earth Power, I don't think Mamacita is strong enough to one-shot the Torkoal. Who threatens with an Earthquake? Mommy has great special pressure, so she switches in on a curse. Next turn we almost take the kill with Psychic, while they miss a Stone Edge. Add that to the list of blessings we're going to count later. Now another Psychic safely gets the kill. With Chandelure here, I could switch to Mama on an immune Shadow Ball. Two Earthquakes later and we get another kill. Mommy is back thanks to the miss a second ago, and the Talonflame's Brave Bird activates our Barry. Now we're safe to live any non-crit hit, and get the kill with Thunderbolt. Things got a little touchy there, but surely these next few battles will go a little smoother. Cybolt is second, and honestly, like I mentioned before, Gyarados is the only thing I'm really worried about. Clawitzer is one shot by Madre's Energy Ball, and that immediately brings in Starmie. Mami doesn't have dry skin to make her immune to water moves, but she at least resists psychic types. Unfortunately, they just set up a light screen on the switch. This is pretty bad, because Energy Ball now only does a third of health. Meanwhile, an opposing surf brings us to just over half. Well, nothing much to do here, but get another attack off. But then they got a higher roll, and Mommy falls to a second surf. This Elite Four just got way harder. Mommy was my best answer to Drasna and her Dragon type Pokemon. Not to mention Diantha's terrifying team now, just outnumbering me. Mama gets revenge on the Starmie by taking it out with Return. Barbarical is another easy answer for Madre. And now to deal with Gyarados. My plan is to switch into Mommy, who outspeeds and can get the kill with Thunderbolt. The problem is that one Dragon Dance is enough for them to outspeed us, and the attack boost doesn't fare well against our low physical bulk. Miraculously, they go for a greedy second Dragon Dance, which lets Mommy get the kill after all. Guys, this is the easiest Elite Four, right? Now to battle Wickstrom while I still can. His Klefki lead can be annoying as it sets up Torment, but Mamacita doesn't mind because she has both Earthquake and Earth Power, both of which are used to take down the Klefki and Probopass. His Scissor on the field now just means Mamacita can now get another kill thanks to a Fire Blast and Earth Power combo. So, I get a little greedy when Aegislash switches in and go for another Earthquake, just to get any damage off. But they always lead with King Shield. It would have been perfectly safe for me to switch if I wanted to. Now I just commit and use Earth Power. I would have used Earthquake again, but the Torment was still active. We do very little damage to them in defense form. Then a stab Iron Head leaves Mamacita with just 13 HP. That was probably a roll. Mama tags in on a random move, hoping it'll be a ghost type attack. Unfortunately, it is another Iron Head and it does some sizable damage. We're not gonna stay in anyways. Mama can maybe kill with Sucker Punch, but they definitely kill with the super effective Sacred Sword. This lets me tag Mom in, and now that we've pivoted correctly, Mom outspeeds and gets the kill with Flamethrower. Last but not least, but also not most, is Drasna. I may have lost my best Pokemon for this fight, but it's nothing a little elbow grease can't fix. With the help of Psyshock that we got from a TM, Mom easily takes out the Dragalge after getting hit by a Surf. Altaria is next and takes a couple size shocks herself before putting Mom to sleep with a sing. No problem here because Mommy switches in on an immune Dragon Pulse just to outspeed and steal the kill. Noivern is probably the biggest threat to our team, being faster than everyone. What I'm scared of most is an unending chain of air slash flinches. And there's one. But one is all they get because Mommy fights through the next one to cleanly take down Noivern and the following Dredagon winning us the final battle of the Elite Four. Whew. Honestly, I wasn't that confident I'd make it to the champion in this gauntlet. In every other challenge or Nuzlocke that I've done, I've had a good variety of answers for the fights, but this time, the Mother's Day team has a lot of similar weaknesses. There are some Pokemon that just hard counter my entire run. Without doing any calcs, I'm really glad I made it this far. And so is Mom, our OG. That's why she wants to make sure herself that this run doesn't end in failure. Diantha's Halucha lead isn't a problem at all. One poison jab is the best they could do before going down to a single Psyshock. 
but a contentious dinosaur is here early. That base 121 attack stab head smash is the very reason mom needed to lead. No one can take that hit. So our only chance for victory is to land a will-o'-wisp and maybe survive enough to do a little damage. If we miss, the run could be over. Sadly, this plan involves mom going down here. I'd love for her to make it to the other side, but we've got to cut our losses in order to win. Her first and last Will-O-Wisp actually lands on the Tyrantrum, cutting their attack in half. Then, they actually miss the first head smash. This lets mom get some important damage off, and then they just miss their other head smash. Mom could live to see the end. This very quickly became the perfect scenario. The mom that started off this run now gets her third kill in the champion fight and burns the Gorgeist to a crisp. Let's go! Diantha's own Gudra is here next, but she's actually not as scary as Shauna's from earlier. With no Sludge Wave or Earthquake, Mommy is safe to set up Wishes and eventually take them down with the Moon Blasts. We get burned in the meantime, but Trace doesn't activate since we already set up Thunder Wave. Aurora sets up Light Screen on Mom's return to the fight. She makes sure that we all know who the OG single mom is and one-shots her second dinosaur. Now, Diantha's Mega Guard of War, one of the scariest Pokemon in the whole game, is last. Things have been going really well, but this Mega Mommy is capable of flipping everything on its head. Mama switches in on the first turn of Mega to take an immune Shadow Ball. Then a fake out does about a quarter. I'm really hoping Return could just get the kill next turn, because I don't have much of a plan if it doesn't. Mama takes the Stab Moon Blast, doing a little over half, then unleashes her return upon the champion. And she lives on one. This is bad. By this point of the fight, Diantha has already used two Forest Doors. That's the number that the Elite Four had. But I don't know if she has one more or not, since, you know, she's the champion. Getting a return off after the heal would be great, but Mama is too valuable with her fake out to risk it. Moonblast did about 140 damage to us, so keeping her in is not an option. It turns out she does have another heal left after all, so she's back to full when Mommy switches back in. My strategy here was that, if they did attack, Trace might activate on our switch and get the kill with a burn. Admittedly, I don't know what I'm doing. Thanks to the burn tick, Mommy has no shot of living any hits. It would have been better to switch back into Mom. A panic pivot brings Mama in on a moon blast. I expected Shadow Ball, but I, <laughs> I have no idea what's happening anymore. We got really lucky though and lived on 7, so another fake out comes out. Still, I want to preserve fake out for the future and pivot into anyone else. So, with a heavy heart, I send in Mommy to die to her Mega counterpart. At this point, she wouldn't really be able to outperform the Mega after all. So, she was the best choice. Rest easy, Mommy. You have always been, and will be, the anchor to the team. There's no need for a highway to the danger zone. We're already there! Both Mama Sita and Mama get outsped and killed. Mom can maybe live a hit, but their base 135 special defense will be very difficult to break through. Madre is currently the only chance we have left. Her base 90 speed versus their base 100 doesn't leave me super hopeful, but the only shot we have left is to maybe, somehow, outspeed, land the 75% accurate stun spore, and go from there. Good luck, Madre. Ready for the worst, Madre takes the stage. We lock in stun spore, and she actually outspeeds and lands the attack? Right away, Madre tragically goes down to a psychic, but this clutch just saved us the game. Now, Mamacita is far faster than Mega Guard of War. She now stands where two fallen fellow mothers were just a second ago. Forget her rivalry. With one vengeful push, Mamacita unleashes her strongest poison jab, defeating the Guard of War and winning us the entire run. Thank you all so much for watching. Pokemon X and Y have some decent highs and some unfortunate lows, but runs like these really elevate the game for me. Or maybe I just really like doing Nuzlocke's, I don't know. Shout out to my buddy Ace for the challenge suggestion. He just kind of shotgunned a bunch at me, and I'm not gonna lie, there are some bangers. If you have any challenges that you'd like to see on the channel, then please let me know down in the comments. Yo, shout out YouTube for putting them down below the video again. 
to the, to, to the side was just so bad. Also, if my voice sounds a little off in this video, I apologize. I think I'm getting sick. Anyways, I've had a lot of fun making these, and the support that you guys have been showing me really means a lot. If this ends up being a thing that I could do, then I don't think I could be happier. Well, I mean, you know, there's a couple of, you know, life fulfillment. And anyway, <laughs> that's all I've got for today, guys. I'll see you guys next time, and have a good one.